Hello, I am Allison Lane. I am the host of the creative nonfiction community. I am a career publicist and marketer and now marketer for authors. The um, creative nonfiction community is 1,200 writers growing weekly. Oh, can you hear my dog? I have two mm. very badly trained dogs, very badly trained. Um, and uh, anyway, 1,200 writers all starting from wherever they started. So if you're new to the group, awesome. If you're new to writing and wondering, what kind of pen should I use? Awesome. If you are working on your fifth book with HarperCollins, awesome. There's always something to learn. And wherever you are in the journey, you're in the right place. Mostly because we show up. And you can ask any question you want. And you can ask for any input. You can ask for a critique partner. You can ask, does my log line sound exciting enough? You can ask, what agents should I be looking at? How do I find an agent? And P.S., a lot of times I've done a webinar on that and it's sitting on the YouTube channel. Or will some, you know, 100 people will see your post and respond. Uh, and so if you don't ask for what you need, you will not get what you want. And that's how we roll, right, Mona? Yep, Mona Mijas is a moderator in the group. So if you see her name pop up, just know that she can answer all kinds of questions and point you in the right place as well. Um, today, we're just gonna hop right in because I asked one of our members, Carly Cat, to be with us today. She is a professional editor and works on manuscripts and polishing them so that they're ready for the publisher, which is different than I wrote a draft and I need it developmentally edited. So um, Carly, before we get too far along, tell us where you are and how you got into this line of work. Yeah, um, so just to make sure everybody can hear me. We good, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my name is Carly Cat. Uh, my business is Cat Editing. And yeah, I mostly work on nonfiction books. Um, I love nonfiction books, love editing those. I do work with a lot of people to publish it before publishing. I also work with a lot of self-publishers actually. Um, so it's a, it's a good mix of both. Um, I, it's kind of weird how I got into this line of work, but, um, my dad is a lawyer and he, um, has kind of a side second business where he helps other people. Well, he does real estate law. And so then he helps other people become real estate agents as well. So anyway, um, he had a lot of documents that were supposed to be written for like general public. If you don't have any prior knowledge, you should be able to read this. And so he would have me edit them um, in like middle school. He would have me edit them. And because <laughs> um, I was, I don't know, like spelling bee kid and I was good at grammar and things like that. So that's what he had me do. And uh, I kind of forgot about it because he didn't have me do it much in high school and college. And then in COVID, he um, sent me another document. He was like, hey, if you have time, can you do this? I was like, of, of course I have time. It's COVID. So <laughs> I did it. And then I realized that this is really fun. And this is actually a job. Like I can actually do this. And so I, I just figured out how to start an editing business and get trained and all that. And now we're here. <laughs> that is so funny. I think so many of our writers and certainly me, I, I was editing. My mother was in English school or an English mm -hmm. teacher, so language arts. And I would grade her papers for her. And um, because she was like, I just can't, you know, like I would give people A's that she was like, really? I'm like, yeah, this deserves an A. Like I'm going by the rubric. Mm -hmm. And then she'd be like, but this, this person got a C, like, it's awful. Like, huh, I almost give her an A. I'm like, bias much, mom? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so it's funny how we are like baptism in words starts so young and we build this ability to always you know, destructure and take apart and put back together in a stronger way. Uh, and that's really the job of the writer, right? The author before it goes to the publisher. So I'm, I'm going to share my, what I'm seeing with 
publishers and their expectations, but I want to hear what you have to say first. What do publishers expect? That is a good question. Um, so I'm hearing more and more. I actually don't work directly with publishers that often, but I'm hearing more and more from writers who come to me and say that their book was rejected because it wasn't ready. It wasn't polished enough. Hmm. Um, and so then they need to go to editors, high editors, and then they can go back. So that's kind of the trend I've learned that it's kind of leaning more toward that. Hmm. It, and that would, well, here's my experience. So I, I just 10 minutes ago was on a zoom with an author who, um, who's on contract with Harper Collins and her deadline is instead of having 12 months to write her book, she has four because they were super duper excited. And, um, and also because as a marketer, I told her to tell them, you realize these competitive books are coming out in the next year. And they were like, oh, we should crash the boards. I'm like, yep, you should. But they're not working with me. I work with her because I am her essentially marketing strategist. Uh, and, uh, but what has happened now is that they gave her a date and normally it's like, via con Dios, we'll see you on that date. The, the publisher does not, is not your book coach. They expect you to hand in your work on a date and be polished and fresh. Yes. They, because they have scheduled your book, which is a product, my friends, um, for launch on a, on a certain date. So if you hand in something that needs revision, no, ma'am, that's, that's not cool. That's like saying like, we're going to launch a new Gatorade flavor in coordination with spring, but the formula wasn't ready. And so I guess we're just going to have to postpone it. Like, well, the financial plan was based on the new Gatorade flavor and, um, uh, you know, then there's a problem with the factory and they found spider eggs in the, the uh, cardboard box. Uh, this is an actual example that happened to me when I was running PR for Gatorade. And uh, they found spider eggs laid in the cardboard boxes and they had to do a complete scrub down of the, the cleanest place I had ever seen ever, including my own bathroom is a Gatorade facility. It is the whole place smells like Kool-Aid. It's amazing. And <laughs> still, you know, like stuff happens, but the publisher is, is a company that makes books to sell. So if you hand in something, they don't look kindly on the book, the manuscript that needs revision. Once it comes in, they expect to what? Proofread it, copy edit it. Proofread, I'm sure. Probably it, it depends on the publishing house, how much editing they're going to do, but absolutely proofreading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they don't want you to spell everybody's name wrong, but it's, they, there are, you know, there's somebody whose job it is to check the spelling of the names that even if it's consistent, if you spell my name with one L, they're still going to check mm -hmm. because maybe you just remembered wrong. Like Oklahoma doesn't have a Q, but you wrote it the same every single time. They're going to check. They're going to, they're just like investigators. They're going to check. Yeah. What, um, what I find really throws people for a loop are the style guidelines, mm -hmm. which people don't really know about before they get the deal and before the, then you know, the, the publisher says like, okay, you know, we, but you know, congratulations, you're part of the team. We're so excited. Uh, you know, your, your manuscript is due on this date. Uh, let us know if you have any questions and the writer gets to writing and then, and then uh, yes, Mona Oak with a Q Oklahoma. Uh, uh, and then three months or two months or, um, uh, you know, two weeks before it's due, the writer at either asks for the style guidelines for that publisher mm -hmm. or has had it all along 
but was overwhelmed with paperwork that they didn't read it. And there are some surprising time consuming uh, formatting changes that need to happen in order to hand in your manuscript. Now, again, I don't work, I'm a marketer for authors uh, or experts who want to create a book. So I'm working with them and they usually react like, I have to do what? Like, yes, you do have to do this. Well, how do I change the margins on a Google doc? I knew, I know how to do it on a Word doc. Like, well, we're gonna, we're gonna teach you and we're gonna do it right now. Uh, so here's fun, fun fact. Uh, it, you might've learned AP style writing, you know, the guidelines, but um, HarperCollins likes Chicago style. That is something that you need to know and learn. Most publishers, I would yeah, say most publishers. publishers go with Chicago. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's mostly news stations and blogs and websites and things that use mm -hmm. AP. Yep. And, and so that, and they have particular like margins. So a regular margin of a of a word document is the default is one inch mm -hmm. one inch on top and bottom one inch on the left and right publishers want it an inch and a quarter like it's just like it's almost like the spanx of of the publishing world like ever so tight like just a hair tighter and um it changes the format or the layout or you know, it makes it makes the pages more condensed. And if if the writer is looking at um, paragraph sizes, that will uh, those will adjust because it's yes. ever so tighter. Yeah. Uh, and yes, Rachel Z Mag. Yes, I they love have. times. <laughs> They I love, love they, don't, they don't want you to, first, first of all, do not design your own font. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going to let that drop there. Do not design your own font. Nobody well, is interested in that. Yes. And I think a lot of the confusion comes in when we're talking about, there's two kinds of formatting. There's the formatting of how the Word doc needs to look. And then there's the formatting of like InDesign or whatever. And that's actually designing the book and designing the pages for how it's going to print. And you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. The publisher is going to do that. If you hire a formatter with in your self-publishing, they're going to do that. Um, when the publisher is talking about formatting the manuscript, it's, it's going to be the margins um, or the spacing between lines and things like that, just so that it's easier to read. It's more uniform. It's easier for then the formatter in the publishing house to handle. Um, something I do when I do copy editing before someone sends it off to a publisher, they can send me the guidelines and I will do it because I normally um, make a standard type format mm -hmm. of the word doc anyway for me to edit it because it's a lot easier yeah. so if they say hey can we actually do one and a half inch margins that's totally fine you can just let me know um and then i can do that yeah. and then you don't even know how, need to know how to do it <laughs> right right but if you're if you're like i'll just set my default to that great just set your default to that just you know just um you know, I know you like a uh, glacial indifference font or you like you love a sans serif or a sans serif, uh, but they need a serif. They, they just want Times New Roman. Um, I had one client who wanted to design her cover page as an inspiration. Like nobody wants your inspo. They're not. This is was this is for, you know, not for self-publishing, but like that's that's not a good use of your time. Uh, and uh, the things that can really slow you down, in addition to what Carly said, is, you know, where does your, is using the tab manual, don't do it. Even though you're like, uh, but the paragraph to end, I did return, and then I did a tab. Or a re some people do return to return, and then a tab. And nobody wants you manually tabbing, ever we want you to so carly you probably just do that you pro you probably just 
Oh, you're on mute, girl. Yes, yes, I do that in addition to copy editing. I will take out all the tabs and make sure that they're automatic. Um, yes, I can do that. Yeah. Um, Mary Jane has a question. What do you mean? How, <laughs> else, is there, how else is there a way to tap to indent? Yeah, so yeah. when you do, um, if you're using Word, um, you should be able to go to when you choose the spacing and you can choose 2.0 or 1.5, 1.0 spacing, right? And that changes yeah. how, how tall it is this way. Mm -hmm. um, you can also choose, there should be like line spacing options or something like that is um, another button on the drop down menu and it'll pull up a different window. And then you can choose um, like advanced settings. And there you can set that each paragraph has a 0.5 left indent at the beginning. Um, I think it'll be like first line indent and it'll it'll default to 0.5 or half inch um, indent. And so that's how you would do it. Um, something I found really helpful, this might be kind of hard to describe, but. I'm gonna share my screen and show it in a minute because I just have oh, to show it. Oh, work, it. yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so what about, on, what about on Google Docs? Yeah, on Google Docs too. Same. I'll show you both ways. It should be the same. Yep. There should be a way to set the automatic formatting to have indents at the beginning of paragraphs. Okay. Then I have one other question. All of these little details, let's say you're doing it through an agent. Doesn't the agent tell you? Well, no, this is different than presenting your book proposal, which they look at and they say, I, we love it. Now we want you to go and finish the book. And when you finish the whole manuscript, we want you to submit it like this, or in, particularly for you, Mary Jane, because I know you're, you know, uh, Mariana, because I, I know your book so well, is they'll say, great, we want you to make these edits. And also when you return it to us, use these style guidelines. Your so, agent is not going to give you those. Okay. So I don't have to worry about it before I get a interest from a publisher. No, you don't. But there are um, there are working mistakes that you have not made. But there are like the woman I worked with who insisted on designing her cover page of her proposal. I'm like, no. Um, I've also heard of very expensive like book doulas saying like, you know what you should do is hire somebody from Fiverr and make a caricature of yourself and put it at the bottom of each page, like in your proposal. Like, nobody wants that. They're, 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 no, they don't want you to create a flyer or anything. It's a standard, it's just standard. They wanna see, they wanna see the meat. Yeah, know? standard is always best with submitting things like that. Um, I always put in a, like placeholder title page uh, when I edit a book. And so it'll just have the title and then the author's name. Um, and I always make sure to comment on that and say, don't worry about this. Don't try to make it look good. Like it doesn't matter right now. It's just gonna be redone. And then you can have the formatter do whatever you want. But right now this is just gonna be a placeholder. And so that's kind of how you should think about the entire manuscript. If you don't like how it looks, it's okay. It's just supposed to be standard right now. And then you can focus on how it looks after that. Yep, wise, wise words. One of the things that I think helps eventually is to not give a publisher, or even if you're self-publishing, a wall of words. You know, you, nobody wants super duper duper long paragraphs, despite the fact that Americana, which is, I read this year and it's delightful, does have the wall of words, but it's, it, it because it's a literary, it's literary fiction, but it generally, it's, you know, you, you want to be thinking like, how can this be chopped up? Or if it's maybe because it's nonfiction and you're offering advice, maybe you're inserting, you know, these three steps or this sidebar, you know, call out quote, or here's a, this part portion will be a chart and you can identify that in the manuscript, but nobody wants you designing the chart, right? Would you agree, Carly? Like you don't need to sketch out 
the layout of a page. They'll know right. if you just yeah. say, yeah, you don't need to do that. And things like um, if there is only one line on one page and the rest of it is blank, you also don't need to worry about that because the font's going to change. The page count is going to change. All that's going to change. So you don't even need to worry about that. It's not going to end up in the real book. Oh, that's a good tip. That's a good tip. Yeah, people get really, you know, interested in like page breaks and it's, it's everything's going to change. And that's exciting because other people are on your team and they care as much about your book as you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. James is right too about learning styles. Styles are a great tool. If you know, those are in word. Um, it's like heading one, heading two. Uh, I'm going to open my, I'm going to share my screen because I have this open and I want to show you. So you should be able to see this is a word document and that's, this is the, um, so this says it's blank, but chapter 25, Allison is awesome. This is, I was just with a client. So I was obviously, this is not a real thing, but this, I changed these margins to be uh, one and a quarter inch. But the way you do that is you go up here to home in the upper left. Come on, stay with me. Stay with me, girl. Where'd you go? Now, it, now of course, now it's shy. Oh, what happens to Betsy? Oh, let me go to layout. Oh, we're on home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you yeah. want to go to layout. Anyway. Yeah. Sorry, I'll show you in Google and I'll show you in Word. So um, the default for Word uh, is, is one inch. So when you go to layout and you go to margins, you can customize. And then this is what it looks like in customization. You've got right and left and it says one inch and one, in, and one inch of both. You just put in you know, whatever it is, so, uh, 1.25, 1.25, um, and then you press OK, and suddenly these things have changed. I'm sorry, did you go to uh, home layout to do that, or you went to homeware to go do all this? No, I, I was, James caught me. I was, um, I was com combining the Google change and the yeah. word. Right now we're in Word. Uh -huh. And you go up to the top and you go straight to layout. Uh -huh. Okay. And then you go to margins. Mm -hmm. And then it offers you some here. And then always it, the one that you're using is at the top. Uh -huh. And it just remembers. So I already changed those. The Can I ask other, you? Go yeah. ahead. Can I ask you, how do you make that the default? That every time you open a new Word doc or later a Google doc, that it has these same things all the time? I will get to that in a minute because that, that is about what James was talking about in styles. Thank you. Thank you. Let me get to that in a sec. Thank you. So the other thing here is that we, um, under home over here in paragraph, we've got line spacing, line and paragraph spacing, right? So we want double space and sometimes people think it looks really great to add a space after a paragraph and it looks automatic. It, it your, your publisher doesn't want that when you hand in the manuscript. Sometimes I use that for book proposals because it makes everything look really sharp. But when it goes to formatting at the publishing house, they, you, it's really easy to take out. So all I do is, you know, do like a control A where I, I um, select all and then go from there. Uh, so the, the rule for, I'm just using the HarperCollins rule right now because I'm working on something that's going to them, is that the chapter name is um, in, you can, it, it's just not in all caps. You can do it like this. The first line of the chapter is not indented, but the thing is, you what you want to do is control A, and then the way that I do it, and I think Carly said she does it differently, is you want the, um, just drag and drop this little tiny doohickey so that all everything 
moves over to the first line and then but and then i and then i sort of go from there and i say okay well you know i don't we don't need the first line of the chapter to indent and subtitles are not indented and that's that's it it's very you know it ends up looking very plain but it's easy on the eyes for the formatter yeah i can i can just walk you through how to do it the other way as well okay so go back to where you were choosing the line spacing okay mm -hmm. and then it should be line spacing options mm -hmm. and then in the second yep it, it's not going to be that one you're going to click special Ooh. That if it's if you do the left and right, it'll indent the entire thing. But special, you'll do first line, and it should auto populate to half. Yep. Okay. See, that's you. That's and good. good. As well. And, and so yeah, it indented all of those because those are all new. Um, right. But if there was a line that went longer than if there was a sentence that went longer than one line, then it wouldn't have indented both lines. Right. Let me just make this. You know, yep. There you go. That. And um, that's how you want it to look. Mm -hmm. um, question someone said all right when you put those like three stars should you do an extra space before and after those three stars number one and then if you're sending like your query packet in sample chapters if you're you know like first you have the query letter the next is the um whatever synopsis in sample chapters should you make it continuous or should you start each section on a brand new page Okay, that's two questions. So number one, do not put spaces above or below the the asterisk. That's just, I mean, essentially, the, the, the style guidelines are two or three pages long, and one page is a um, an example from the okay. publisher. So you just follow those. I mean, that, and so for HarperCollins, this is the this is what they want. So great. And they even say, D please don't make the footnote, like even the footnotes need to be 12 point type. Now, mm -hmm. before we get to the other question about book proposals, which I'll answer in a second, and Carly probably has her mm -hmm. view, mm -hmm. uh, that when we come up here to styles, see how this says styles right here? Mm -hmm. if, we, if we want the experience that we're having right now, the, the guidelines to be the normal, uh, there are a couple ways to do this. One is to make this bigger and we can say, okay, we want, we want this, what we're experiencing right now to be normal. So we come over here. It's a lot, of, it's like literally um, modify, no, select all, no, update normal to match selection. So this is, yes, we want normal to now be what we're experiencing. So it made it because I had only I had only um, highlighted one little bit. So let me do it again. Normal update. And so now it made everything look like the top. <laughs> so I I like I I tend to learn one way that works for me and just go with that. But I'm going to use Carly's um, trick as well, going into the line spacing thing. The styles, I think, you know, you can, you can do like one paragraph, but I don't think that you can just, I think you would have to say the title looks like this and the subtitles look like that. Um, but once yeah, you set up, yeah, once you get it set up, it's set up. James. The reason you're bouncing back and forth is you have all your text is normal. You've just bolded one and indented one. So that's why when right. you change normal, it all changes. Right. Um, yeah, so now if you change normal, that first line is not right. going to change. And when I get a document, I don't care if, you, if you're like me. I grew up a desktop publisher. So, yeah. you know, back in the 90s. So even if you're like me and you want to present a 98% completely formatted pretty document like you wanted it, I will destroy all the styles and start over. Yep. Because styles are like STDs. Every, every document that's ever been associated with this brings in new styles and new styles and then they just proliferate and they go crazy. So, yeah, just 
the, the, the thing I learned is don't get it right, R-I-G-H-T, get it written. Oh, I love that. Love it. Dang. You can use that. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Just get it out of your head. Don't get it helping, right, get it written. I'm going to put it on a vote card. I'm going to put your name on it. Exactly. Yeah. I can't help you when it's still in your head. Yeah. Also. Yeah. So get it out. Just keep keep typing, you know, keep, keep going, and then, then ask for help. Carly, do you do that too? When someone gives you a manuscript, do you just go like plain text? Just um, yeah, I, it kind of depends on what it looks like. If it's already looks like they kind of know how to use styles and things like that, then I'll just go through and check them all and make sure that they're all correct. Um, but otherwise, I'll pretty much go remove all formatting and start from scratch. Yeah. yeah, I do that too. I do it too. And it's not that anyone's doing something wrong. It's that there are hidden like hidden formatting things that don't even show up when you hit that little paragraph symbol that you're like, why won't it do the thing that I need it to do? Well, that's why, because sometimes it's wonky and we just have to strip it out and that's cool. So yeah. So Mona says, I'll fix my margins as soon as, <laughs> as I've done with this girl, you don't have to do that. You have to, you know, we don't rearrange the furniture until the house is built finish the house right so mona is a sci-fi writer she also writes nonfiction poetry she's also a moderator in this community we couldn't do what we do without her and and she's written i want to say three novels since the pandemic started and uh, yeah styles are like stds yuck um, yeah. What? Would you mind if I shared my screen real quick? I just want to try to share. Yeah, go ahead. Word. I love it. I think I need to make you the co-host in order to do that. that works. I'm trying to type some things up right now so that we yeah. have some things to look at. <laughs> Can everybody see Carly's screen? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, Yeah, it looks this, uh, Word or Google Docs, sorry. I don't know if this I have- This is still Word. So yeah. I want you guys to see a few things. One, this is what a tab looks like. And you can see it's blue um, because I have selected this button here and it's in home and it's the little Pilcrow thing. And if I unselect it, deselect it, then it doesn't show formatting. And if I do select it, it will show it. So you can see that this is a manual tab here and we don't want those. Um, and between every word is a little blue dot and that's a space. And this means that there's a paragraph, like um, a hard return, sorry. This is a page break. So I find that this is really helpful in me editing because I can see what's going on. Like why, why is there so much space down here? Well, if I just click this then I can, click it, then I can see it. If there wasn't a page break, maybe it would have been this. And we don't want that. We want, we want page breaks. So that's kind of how you would see that. That's really helpful for me in knowing what's going on and also knowing if this is manual or not. So then we can go and look at, we'll go here and line spacing options and I'll change it to what we want. So left, we'll do first line, half inch, and we don't want any space before or after, and we'll do double space. I didn't highlight all of Question. Um, so when one seems in publishing, they always want you to send Word, not Google Doc. So how do you be sure that they cannot go to your document and see all the past comments from anyone who was maybe? I know the answer to this. I go just ahead. had to do this for someone. Carly, do you know the answer to this? You don't I'm want sorry, them to I see all the comments. Me. You don't want them to see all the comments and changes that maybe like we've had someone like Allison or you help us. We don't want a publisher to see that when we send them the word doc. What do we Yeah. Do? So if you go to review, um, uh -huh. you should be able to manage all the changes. If you want to 
approve all of them or reject all of them here on the huh? big. You can choose accept all changes and stop tracking. Same with reject, reject all changes and stop tracking. Or if I'm you sorry. want to keep them and you just don't want them to see it, you can go to tracking here and change the view. So right now it shows all markup, even though there are no changes. <laughs> so I will make changes really quick. We'll do some spaces and do that and delete some letters. Great. Okay. So that shows some changes now. So I'm sorry, you went too fast. When you said that I accept or I reject and stop tracking, was that a second command to do stop tracking or because you accepted it, you stopped the tracking? Uh, it doesn't automatically. So here's the difference. Accept all changes okay. or you can accept all changes and stop tracking. So you have to go to that button and you show me how you did that. So you separately stop the tracking. Yes. To, yes. Yeah. So that'll be tracking and you select this button here. It'll turn it off yeah. and turn it back on. Does that answer so your question? So they can never see your tracking, but it, what if you wanted to go back and see those yourself? You can't do that. Right. Yet. So if you did this, it's going to get rid of them. So right now I, I made some changes so that we can see the difference here. If you okay. go to tracking uh -huh. and then select this, this will show you the different views. All markup is going to show you everything. No markup is going to show you as if they were all approved. Okay. But they weren't all approved. It just looks like it was so that you can go back to all markup and it'll show you all of them again. So when you send this version that has no markup, they can never go back and see your tracking. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they'd be able to change the view. Um, I yeah. mean... What if, I do, there any, if there isn't yeah. another way, you could save it as a new file, accept all the changes and send that to them. And then you have the old yeah. file with all the changes still there. Sure. sure. And then just because like eventually they're going to track their changes and they're going to send them back to you. And you don't want to have to go page by page and go, okay, they said this, but I said this and that. Like nobody wants that kind of crazy <laughs> in their life. Yeah. And yeah. So you can actually combine them. Like Word allows you to combine these, including the track changes and the comments. So that's yes. one option. And the second thing that I wanted to share with you, hi, Devorah, hi, um, is that yes, the publishers do not want to go to your Google Doc. They will require you to download that doc, put it in Word and email it to them like, like a digital snail mail. And um, I think it, it has to do with, it's easier for them to, to send that around and um, they're not like accepting like viruses and whatever, but you're going to end up uploading their track change Word document back to your Google um, Drive. Mm -hmm. And you can do that with their comments. And right, so, right. Um, and I recently had to learn how to do that. And I was like, oh my God. And all I did was ask the Google verse. And 15 minutes later, I was like, are you kidding me? This little tiny button that they hid in the corner and they, you know, they like put it under a bucket and it's just that one little thing it's there. I was so ticked off. Because when Devorah and I, when it, when Devorah and I were working together, we're like, no, we have to download everything. I'm like, yes, we do, but we want to be able to like put it back up. Because what if there are revisions and you want to share it with your critique partner or your editor? You need a shared workspace, and so <laughs> you can do that. Uh, let me, if you want me to show you where I can figure that out, or Carly, I can tell you your thing is over here. Okay, I'm gonna reject all of these. Actually, sorry, if I can go through the styles really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one last thing about the tab, I did make all of this have the first line um, indent. And so now it shows a separate tab because there was already a manual tab there. We could just delete that. And now it doesn't have any arrows, which means these are all automatic. So the first line of, well, chapter title, we don't want indented. In the first line, we don't want indented. Then you can highlight the chapter title. And if you select heading one, that's gonna change it to the first heading style. Um, and so then let's 
just do chapter two. And then if we do heading one on that one as well, it's gonna look the exact same. Um, and then the rest of it will be normal style. And you can see that normal style is highlighted here. And that's just gonna be the regular body text. Um, a really good reason for doing this, one, it'll, it'll look um, consistent, which is really good. But if you pull up the table of contents, it will show them. Um, and so it makes it a lot easier to navigate your book as well. And if you end up having a subtitle, you can make that one heading two, and that'll show up under chapter two. Um, so I, I love using the table of contents over here, automated. It's, it's really helpful in navigating the document. And you can also create a table of contents automated within the Word doc using the heading styles. Also, Carly, could you then decide chapter two really needs to be chapter eight. And instead of having to cut and paste chapter two and move it, can you just do that in the left navigation bar? Because I see there's a little, there's a little like that. Yeah. yeah. That just, that's just the drop down thing that hides all the subtitles. So you can't do that. You would have to move the in, copy and paste the entire thing. Uh, so copy paste uh -huh. all of chapter two. Put right. it before chapter one, and now chapter two is above with the subtitle. Okay, I got excited for a minute. I thought maybe, that's okay. That's why people love Scrivener, and you know. Oh, okay. Okay, that's I, interesting. Yeah. Uh, um, hold on. Question. Uh, Carol has a question. Hello. Yes. Yeah, Carly, do you recommend that um, that we use um, uh, something like this, uh, like um, style head? as you have here, or that we keep it all in the same, like the Times New Roman? Um, I think it depends on what the goal is. Are you sending it to an editor or a publisher or whatever? Um, also, what's going to be best for you? Because I, as the editor, will likely redo it anyway, depending on, depending yeah. on what it looks like, depending on how Right. Well, it's organized and how many headings there need to be. Um, if it's really helpful for you to do this, I would say totally do it. If it's really confusing and your publisher doesn't care, then I feel like it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know if publishers matter. care. I mean, it matter to me. I, I'm just, I, I guess I'm kind of looking at what an editor and a publisher um, would look upon more favorably. Mm -hmm. As an editor, you the list. What was that? I said that the publisher will give you a sheet and say, just do this. Right. Yes, so yeah. When they do, do it. And if it's hard for you, you can hire Carly. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, I can do it. I'm just sort of yeah. wondering. I mean, I mean, I've actually done my chapter um, numbers and titles a little differently, which I'll go back and change now. But um, I was just, again, sort of like industry standard. You know, right. Yeah, I mean, standard, what does standard even mean? Because there's so many different publishing houses or you could self-publish right. or whatever. Um, so yeah, if the publisher tells you to do it, do it. If they say definitely don't do it, don't do it. Otherwise, I'd say it's up to you. You can also ask your editor, um, see if they have a preference. I don't really, I'm gonna implement it if you don't have it, uh, but you don't need to do it if it's confusing or whatever, I can do it for you. No, no it's not confusing. I'm just getting, I'm sort of wondering what the standard uh, Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would ask them. I would ask them what they prefer. Yeah. Okay. I want right. to read. Uh, thank you for that. I want to read a couple of the comments here because there's a lot of chatter going on. Um, definitely everybody likes the STD comment that James made. Um, Rachel, Carly, this is particularly for you. Rachel Zemak, who is a longtime member of the community says, so sorry, I need to sign off soon. I have a huge work deadline tomorrow, but Carly Cat, I may be sending a deaf client your way. It's actually a group who wrote a book that I think fits your type of book and they may be contacting you. The name is Robin, oh, scrolling down. Um, Robin Pollen and Ella Lentz, great people, very different, interesting work. Perfect, uh, awesome. Rachel is, deaf and has, uh, she was an educator. So her okay. book is out on submission and we love how she offers such a tremendous opportunity for us all, all to see like what it's like to be an outsider as a teacher in a 
hearing school, but a teacher of deaf students. And to, mm-hmm. I mean, her stories, she's a beautiful writer. Uh, anyhow, okay, go get them down, 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 down. Do you start a new chapter on a new page? I say yes. 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 Don't do a bunch of hard returns though, uh, because as soon as you add um, extra words in the chapter above, it's going to set it off. So if you can do a page break, that's best. Um, however, I don't care as long as I know what the new chapter is supposed to be. I can I can add in a page break. I don't I don't mind at all if there aren't page breaks already there. Yeah. yeah. Um, for those of you who are watching this as a replay, um, someone emailed and said, "How much is it to edit my manuscript of this many words?" And I did not reply to you because I wanted to reply here. Because one, I don't do that. I am a marketer for authors who want to get published and who, or who already have a deal and who need to promote their work or promote their book. And there's a difference. So if you're promoting your work, you are a leading voice. And even if you don't have a book, you need to promote yourself because you are the brand, your book is the product. Like I'm making the face that my mother used to say to me, like, you must wash your hands. Um, so that's, that's the thing. So that's, that's how I roll. And my job is to make sure that we all know how to market our work to, and that's why I run this group. But if you're looking for, you know, developmental edits and copy edits and proofreading and Carly Cat is... Um, certainly able, right, Carly? This is something that you would do? Yep, yep, definitely. Yeah. And um, I can say, uh, I'm going to guess that you don't respond to emails that just say that. Like, how much to do this? Like, no, that's not how we roll. We roll. Um, yeah, I. so my intake is always, I send a questionnaire and I get a bunch yeah. of information. Um, and that's all the information I need, but uh, okay. yeah. That's good. That's good. So Carly, because a lot of people don't, they don't know what to say. So they'll just say, Hey, I, they'll either say that. Um, and it's really direct or it's like, hi, I'm looking for some help. Yeah. What do I need to do? (laughs) And so then I send them the questionnaire as well. Yeah. It it helps get the right information out. Like what do you have a timeline? Mm -hmm. Is there a deadline? Who's this going to? Yeah. Yeah. There's more than that. So, um, if that was you and you emailed me, you should go to carlycat.com and you can submit either the details of your work or if you're watching this later, you can do that. Also there are, um, oh, it's cat editing. It's not carlycat.com, it's cat editing. Thank you. Yes, Carly yeah, Cat. it's cat with two T's. Two T's. Yeah. Uh, the end, there are, there are other, you know, there are editors in our community. You can ask for someone. If you want someone who lives close to you, you can say, hey, I live in Dubuque. Does anyone live close? Um, you can certainly, and Carly blogs a lot, which I is do, how yeah. I noticed her and why I asked her to be a guest today because um, we all need to learn from each other. So if you are um, an an expert in something and Carly probably would not say she's an expert, but I'm going to just tell you if you're here, you're an expert in something, you know, more about something than someone else does. So you have something to share. So just, you know, just show up the way that we see you and say like, Hey, I'd like to share a, you know, a, a mini workshop on um, the braided essay, which I am afraid of. I've tried to write this thing. I don't, I can't do it. I get stuck and, you know, you know who I'm talking to and I'm coming for you. And we'll, I just want us to share more. And so I'm literally asking, if you have something to share, can you just email me or DM me? It's Allison at AllisonLaneLiterary.com. We are a, a community and we should be doing more to be a community. Um, what was I gonna share? Carly, yes. final tips. Um, let's see. 
I would say if you're going to reach out to editors, don't wait until you need editing to reach out to them. Um, <laughs> Yes. That's Don't do point. that. Editors normally are booked out at least one to two months. So you need to reach out at least one to two months before you're even ready. Uh, I have a lot of people saying, Hey, I need you to start tomorrow. Can you do that? I'll pay you whatever. And it's like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't have time for that. I'm already booked up a month and a half in advance. So make sure to do that. So you don't have your schedule pushed back way too far. Can I ask a question about that? Yeah. So I am waiting to hear from my editor. I turned in my book um, June 15th to my press. And I already think that she will give it a too light an edit. I have reason to be concerned. But maybe that won't happen. If I want to book an editor, nobody wants to edit the book until they hear what my editor at the publishing house says. But that's an unknown time. And they want to pass to press in September, but I don't yeah. have edits. Like, should I book an editor now? <laughs> I don't know when. Right. So what kind of editing is the editor doing now at the house? No is idea. It... Okay. Um, I mean, it's her first read, so it's not going to be line edits. It's going to be substantive, right. hopefully. Probably right? developmental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Substance. I have, okay. I have worried um, that, that yeah. it be enough. I would say, um, talk to some editors and just explain the situation and say, this is what it looks like. You can send them a sample say, this is what it looks like before. I'm not sure what they're going to do. Um, they're going to get it back to me on this date. I'll probably need a few weeks to incorporate their changes. I'll be ready on this date and I can update you. I mean, it's unlikely that it's going to be, um, so much better that the new editor won't have anything to do. Um, especially if it's developmental edits, it'll just be kind of rearranging things. So I don't know if you're, if you're planning on hiring a developmental editor, that might be slightly, no, no, it's, it's way too late for that. I'm not hiring a developmental. Okay. Editor. So for line or copy editing. Yeah. So for, if you're going to hire a line or copy editor, I would say, I would appreciate someone sending the sample to me and saying, this is what it looks like before I send it to a developmental editor. I obviously it'll be too late by the time I get it back from them to contact you. So this is what I have. How do you feel about that? Right. I no, normally go just ahead. To be clear that there there's no such thing I think as a developmental editor at the publishing house. I think what I'm sending to is the publishing editor. Okay. Yeah, there's actually a lot of different names for the types of editors, so it's probably just content or so the acquiring so editor, I guess. Okay, yeah. Thinking. Yeah. Um it'll just be like uh story edits or organization, just kind of big picture type things probably. It's like the first level of editing. I'm sure that's what they're doing. Um yeah, sorry for the confusing terminology, but no, no, it's likely what they're doing. Yeah, basically, like there's the editors that I'm paying and the editor that paid me for the book, and this is like I already paid <laughs> my editor, um, a developmental editor, but now the person who bought the book from me has the book, but the, it's an it's it's a total black box. Like I don't know when I'll get it back. I don't know what she'll do, and so I'm just like hoping for the best. Yes, yeah, that is scary. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's um, uh, yeah. That's frightening. Yeah, um, but I, but I get like, so what you're saying is if I reach out to an editor in September, once I have it back from her, that may be too late. Maybe. Um, well, cause you're not sure when you're going to get it back. Right. Yeah. I mean, at this Maybe point, it's the end of July. So you'll now. get it sometime in the, they're, they're not going to give you a week to incorporate edits, even um, first of all, Devorah is an incredible writer. She just stuff comes out of her face and into her, her onto her screen. And it is, she's being too hard on herself because it was what she handed in was great, but she wants it to always be better. So when, she, when that comes back to her, they're not going to say like, here's three days they're they're going to say like hey add more story here or something like that but then she's going to want to address that and then have somebody eyeball it again because she knows that they're not going to have time so i i think you should contact somebody now and just say between this date and this date it'll you know probably what i'm going to ask you to do is like three days work or four days work um, and i think they'll be impressed the other thing i wanted to say is when I have a client who got her edits back from the publisher, she handed them in on time. It was wonderful. 
Um, and they were so happy. They didn't want to look at anything in advance. And what she said was that they had hired um, a freelancer. Somebody edited her book who she had never met and made comments that were irrelevant to her audience and she and the and track changes in like a in red and she said it looked like a bloodletting and she was like and also this is like it's like they're trying to change the, my book they know what they were buying but now I have this new entity and um you know, you never want that to happen. And so I'm just sharing this to you to say, you can go back and say, hey, I'm not going to incorporate all of these edits. I'm not going to, I, I want to refer to my grandmother as Oma. I don't care if you don't know what an Oma is, you can look it up. I'm not gonna say grandmother, like, cause we don't do that anymore. So you can push back and you can do this. You can totally do this. Um, and there are resources to do that in this group. Now, um, just to, in the one minute we have left, just want everybody to smile and be like, what up? Because Regina, my assistant, will not like it if we don't like lean in and give digital a hug. So everybody say hello and goodbye. And if you're looking for help doing anything at all, you have to ask for what you need. Um, I have two spots left in my Buzzworthy lab. That's a six month uh, program. That's a small group program for writers who want expert marketing to build your brand. And um, if you're looking for a book proposal that is yes worthy, I have two spots left through the end of the year. Uh, so, and then Carly, it sounds like you're booked through September. Um, I'm booking for September now. Yeah, about halfway booked. So I have room for a few more projects. Awesome. Well, that's great news. Okay. Uh, we will see you guys the on August 8th. Candace will be hosting a compassionate critique session. And then, oh, I'm going to pause the recording for a sec. Carly. Thank you, Carly, for saying yes. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. I love this community so much. And we'll see you on the 8th. Thank you.